Ahoy there fellow pirates, Safer Seas is now here, and with it, a safe way for new players to experience the game without the toxic or abusive ones ruining their lives. In celebration of this, I thought it would be nice to commemorate the beautiful world this game has to offer. And so yes, you're about to watch a video where a man ranks every island of the game called Sea of Thieves. And yes, you're going to watch it to the end, because I guarantee you, number one, it's going to blow your socks off. So I hope you're ready. Feel free to sit in the bath and have a magnum, or whatever you usually do whilst watching YouTube. I can't believe I'm actually writing this. As I outlined in a previous video full of useless information about the map, uh -uh, don't watch it now, it'll be on the end screen. I stated that the game contains 7 outposts, 25 large islands, 39 small islands, 10 fortresses, 8 sea posts, 4 uncharted islands, 6 sea forts and reapers hideouts along with one extra island which I'll be including here. That makes exactly 101 things. Oh boy. I would like to say that despite my language in this video, there aren't really any islands that I outright hate. I think every island has a degree of beauty and they're all unique enough to have something to offer. Enough wasting time, let's go. 101. Kraken's Fall. Starting with the absolute worst island in the game, I've chosen Kraken's Fall. I HATE this island. It fits a Fibonacci spiral very well and yet there is almost nothing to like about it. It has some Kraken bones which are cool I guess, there's nothing left to like though. The wilds is an area of misery and sewage water which no one likes to look at, so as you'd probably expect, islands in this region are going to be taking up quite a lot of the lower spots in this list. Everything about this island is an inconvenience, including its location. It's been conveniently placed between Ancient Spire and the Outpost of the Wilds, which gives me a reason to come here to collect pigs for merchant voyages. I don't want a reason to go to what I believe is the worst island in the game. Then we have cargo runs. Looting Penelope here decided to stand in a place that's just within the limits of convenience. Oh, well done, you stood near the shoreline. Y yes, I should be congratulating you for not standing at the peak, shouldn't I? Yes, well done, Looting Penelope. Thanks to you, I have to mash my ship between two rocks to deliver cargo to you. And, oh, oh well done. My bottles have been eviscerated by the cannon you decided to stand in range of! Oh, and don't get me started on the vault here. A vault where you need a rowboat to get all the loot out of it because they put it so far inland. And even the trek down to the door is insanely long. Kraken's Fall, I hate you. 100, Fetcher's Rest. We're at number 100 now and I've chosen an island in the Raw. I'm sure it will be no surprise to any of you that islands within the Raw will also occupy much of the lower portion of this list. So why have I chosen Fetcher's Rest as the worst? Well, for a start, it has a vault which is in the centre of the island, making it an absolute pain to ferry loot to your ship from. It's also just so, so boring. It's NPC Walter the Feared agrees. Here's one of his dialogue lines. I definitely never stand barefoot in the lava just to feel alive. I'm sure you'll agree that's sus. He's also completely insane, like most of the NPCs in this game, stating that he definitely hasn't eaten a whole live snake hole and that he's never tortured his crewmate with a hot cutlass because he ate the last biscuit. 99, The Ashen Reaches. At 99 I've chosen the Ashen Reaches, mostly for its location at the bottom of the map. It's a very long way, also another raw island with a horribly placed vault which is going to be a pain to get to. Finally, why is it so shallow? You have to park a mile away from where it looks like the shoreline is supposed to start. 98 Flintlock Peninsula I hate Flintlock Peninsula because of how similar it looks to Fetcher's Rest. Because of the way it so heavily reminds me of such a horrible island, it takes the next spot on this list. The only thing to like here is the remains of Flintlock Burt. I don't know about you guys, but I'm very entertained by the way he was crushed to death. It's weird how he got stuck like that though. How does that happen? 97, Ruby's Fall. At 97, I've chosen Ruby's Fall. It's got quite a clever name given that Ruby Carter fell to her death here, which is awesome. And Burning Tony here is an arsonist, I respect that. Despite that, it's still an island in the raw that is surprisingly solitary. 96, Old Faithful Isle. What a rotten, boring, terrible, awful, evil island. For a start, it's round, that's boring. If you aren't very good at reading maps, it's an extremely painful one to identify reference points to help you find treasure. 95, Flame's End. Okay, this is the first small island on the list, and you know what that means, it's gonna get a lot harder to come up with things to say about them. I mean, look at it, there's, 
There's nothing going on there. 94, Roaring Traders. It's the first C post on our list, and I've put it at the bottom mostly because it's in the raw. But it does have redeeming qualities in its characters. Eleanor is sexy and has a wicked hairstyle, but she's also very unfunny. What did the gold hoarder say to the shipwright? Got anything on sale? Although, to be honest, I would probably pretend to laugh at that to make her like me. The Hunter's Call representative here, on the other hand, is horrifying, but she did give me a bit of information that solved one long-standing mystery, saying Serik knew a handsome merman. That explains why this happened when she found out about her husband's death. If you're reading this, that means I'm dead. And staying that way. But don't be sad, because that just means I can love you forever. Always you. Mm. Merrick. Seen any merfolk lately? There are always more fish in the sea. 93 Brimstone Rock. Features two resource barrels. 92 Roaring Sands. Features three resource barrels. 91 The Forsaken Brink. This island sounds exciting, but it's just not, is it? It does feature a guy who was murdered by Stitch Jim, but that's really the only thing of note here. 90. Morrow's Peak Outpost I believe that Morrow's Peak Outpost is evil. The way it encourages people to explore such an awful place, I think it's reasonable to say that it's an enabler of misery. 89. Scorched Pass I think this is probably the biggest small island of the game. It sort of looks like two islands joined together, kind of like one of my kidneys, which is like two kidneys stuck together as one big kidney. 88, Cinder Islet. Okay, enough about my medical records. This island has an underwater structure, which is the only thing keeping it slightly higher on the list. Okay, it's self-promotion time, it's relevant, I swear. If you like islands, then you'll love the String Island Network, my new Minecraft server. You're probably thinking, why would I want to join a Minecraft world which is mostly water? Answer, this is why. It's modded. Build custom ships, establish bases either floating or on land, and explore beyond. And that's not all, we've got furniture, diving gear, Sea of Thieves fish, and trains. So come join and make yourself a formidable character on the String Island Network. Simply join my Discord server, grab the role and apply for the whitelist to join. We also have plenty of tutorials on the server if you need help. Now, back to the video. 87, The Devil's Thirst. This has the same shortcomings as all the large islands in the Roar. It's always annoying when you want to go to these islands and you just have to wait for the volcano to stop. By the time the wait is over, you've usually naturally obtained the Skeleton Curse. The only reason I've placed this island so high up is because it serves as the entrance to the Heart of Fire, which is an awesome place. But since it's merely the entrance to it, I refuse to put it any higher. 86, Daggertooth Outpost. This outpost is rubbish, isn't it? It's just so open and sandy. Just not interesting. The only good thing here is that there's a lot of barrels all gathered together in one place near the dock, which can make it pretty easy to fill a storage crate. But if you want all the island's barrels, you'll have to go all the way around the back and it's just a bit far. My hope for this island is that it becomes a seaport like Golden Sands did, so that it can be somewhere that players are happy to spawn at. 85 Magma's Tide. I've put this island above the other small islands because it's kind of square, which is just so interesting. 84 Glowstone Key. Glowstone Key is constantly being gnawed at by the Shroud, and I really just put it so high up out of pity. 83 The Sunken Grove. Although it looks cool from above, this island is just very ugly from ground level, and there isn't much interesting about it besides the sinkhole in the middle. Thankfully, it's relatively small, so you won't have to walk around here for that long. Were the colours more vibrant, the sinkhole would be very beautiful. 82 Kraken Watchtower. I've chosen this as the worst fort in the game because it's just so bland. It's especially annoying for me personally because, according to my statistics, it's the fort I've done the most by a significant margin at 15 times. 81 The Wild Treasure Store. I hate how out of the way this sea post is, it's too far north and not between any outposts. The only good thing here is that this is where I got Legendary Hunter of the Sea of Thieves, so that's pretty cool. The NPCs are of course insane as usual, real characters, one who's desperate for friends who I'll probably pretend doesn't exist, and one who thinks the other is an evil skeleton who turned his wife against him. It's like a reality TV show, and I hate reality TV. 80. Scurvy Isley 
This small island is so very close to the lovely shores of Plenty, it's just depressing to be at. Being able to see that nice area so clearly from the dreary area you're currently in. Or at least that would normally be the case, but yeah, it was foggy when I recorded this. 79, Paradise Spring. You're probably wondering why such a lovely island is so far down. Well, this island is a fraud. It wants us to think it's Chicken Isle, but no, no, it's Paradise Spring. You'll never be Chicken Isle, you hear me? No one is falling for your tricks, Paradise Spring. 78, Tri Rock Isle. I don't like that they skipped Uni Rock Isle and Bi Rock Isle and instead decided to go straight to Tri Rock Isle. I appreciate that wasn't very funny, but come on, cut me some slack. I'm describing small islands in Sea of Thieves. They're, they're all basically just the same, but slightly different shapes. 77, Shiver Retreat. Shiver Retreat is in Shiver, a quiet or secluded place in which one can rest and relax. More like Shiver, an act of moving back or withdrawing. Away from this miserable island, am I right? 76, Lost Gold Fort. This is a frustrating fort to do. The vault is a pain to empty and the terrain makes it tough to hit gunpowder keg skellies which are coming towards you. I think it does have a place in the world as there should be a variety in the way you fight each fort. However, I would rather not do this one. 75, Sharkfin Camp. Despite it having a worse location than Kraken Watchtower, I've ranked this fort higher because it has a cannon facing inland, which is useful for defeating the boss. 74, Shark Tooth Key. This island resembles an anchor, which I think is pretty cool. Or is it a shark tooth? Probably the latter, given the name. 73, Lonely Isle. You're probably wondering why there's an island in the shores of plenty so far down on this list. And the answer is this. Just don't like it. 72, Tribute Peak. Maybe it surprises you that I have such a unique island so low, but I do find this place very disappointing. When you hear of a place called the Shores of Gold, you expect gold sands, tropical beauty with thick vegetation and stone structures from an ancient people. And you do get one of those admittedly. Unfortunately, the island is more akin to the wilds than anything truly unique. It's big and it's mysterious, but it doesn't feel very special. The tall tale adventure itself is quite enjoyable, but aesthetically, this island is just not what it could have been. I also find this island a little frustrating to get around. It just takes far too long to travel across it. 71, Marauder's Arch. Marauder's Arch is a cool looking island, but the number of times where I've been sunk somewhere like in the shores of plenty and respawned here, despite it being all the way in the corner of the map, enrages me. Even worse is the fact that the spot where your ship spawns is in range of a skeleton cannon. I do like some things about it though. The mystery of what appears to have been a skeleton fort at some point is interesting. The ferryman's grave is in a very cinematic spot, and the dead guy who died because he overdosed on banana is funny. 70. Blackwater Enclave. Uh, uh what am I doing again? What, what even is this? I mean, there's sand, sand on a, a rock, big rock. 69. Black Sand Atoll. Uh, I don't even, I don't even know. It, it's really close to the Wild Treasures store. That's interesting, isn't it? 68, Curse Water Shores. Donut shaped island, what's not to love? Well, besides the active volcanoes and dim surroundings, I mean. 67, Traitor's Fate Fortress. On to Traitor's Fate Fortress, which is the worst to default. As you can see, since the captaincy update, I've done this a whopping one time. It's got those classic wilds aesthetics, so it's not desirable to go out of your way to come here. 66, Plunderer's Plight. Firstly, Watch me hit this wicked snipe whilst gathering footage for this video. No, hang on. Just... Just, uh... Hang on. Don't try lucky. Just bear with me. I'm good at- I'm good at the game. I swear, I... Okay, forget it. This island is pretty chill. 65, Skull Keep. There's a couple of things to like about Skull Keep. For a start, it has a cannon you can easily hit the boss with. And secondly, it has these little bridges so our poor little skeletal friends won't get their feet wet. On the downside, all the water makes it tough to burn the skeletons to death here. 64, Blind Man's Lagoon. Ingenious. An island designed for blind people. It has sand, grass, trees, and a jacuzzi and the blind person who uses them won't know how shit it all looks. 63, Isle of Last Words. 
This island saw Shipwreck Bay, a big island surrounded by small rocks and just inverted it, which is based in red pill behaviour in my Sigma opinion. Keep up the grind set Isle of Last Words. 62. Shipwreck Bay. At first glance, this island is pretty horrible. A cargo run NPC who stands in range of a cannon, a load of rocks surrounding it to crash into, but I think there's a lot to like here. Firstly, Grok Soaked Ed. The NPC here is literally drunk 24-7, so I'll forgive him for standing somewhere stupid. He also makes a joke about a man's disability, so a well-respectable gentleman all round. There's a couple of easter eggs too. The Black Witch and Pendragon are both from the video game Black Witch from the Pendragon series of games. These games were published by Ultimate Play the Game, which later evolved into Rare. I've never played it, but I'm sure all five pixels of Black Witch are excellent. Back to Shipwreck Bay's other easter egg, a player from the technical alpha who fell to their death a lot, and the way they're commemorated is just beautiful. Finally, lore is happening here as the Burning Blade is under construction at this very island. 61. Liar's Backbone. I'll never forget when I accidentally stumbled across Stitcher Jim's lair here. I was so confused, and just for that, it's higher on the list than a lot of the other wild silence here. 60. Three Paces East Sea Post. I put this sea post here because its Hunter's Call representative likes to eat bait so much that she doesn't like using it for fishing as not to waste it. And this reminds me of Brunk, the best crewmate in the world who also swallowed worms whole. 59. Sea Dogs Rest. This island smells of corpse. 58. Mercy's End Fortress. Obviously, this fortress is pretty much the same as Traitor's Fate Fortress, but I've placed it a lot higher since it's significantly more conveniently placed. 57. Sharkbait Cove. This place is pretty frustrating to be honest. It's an interesting concept with its rings of land creating this eye-like shape. The deep coral basin at the centre is cool, but in terms of gameplay, it's annoying because everywhere looks the same. On any other island, you can know kind of which way is north without having to look at your compass, but here, everything is pretty much indistinguishable. 56. Molten Sand Fortress. Molten Sand's fortress is cool, but only because you'll barely ever come here. I can only recall doing this fort about three times or so. Fighting waves of skeletons as an active volcano erupts is quite an experience. The way that the building is just in the middle and leads to this huge cavern is honestly awesome. Unfortunately, it's not a practical fort with the water being shallow and it being squeezed into the corner of the map. But in terms of pure coolness, it's pretty good. 55. Plunder Outpost. Plunder Outpost is just a little bit boring to be honest. It's got a massive rock and that's all there is to it. On the bright side, it's fairly easy to create up all the barrels and I love the charred skeleton easter egg. 54. Snake Island. Firstly, it should be called Snake Islands, not Snake Island. Secondly, snakes are scary, not misunderstood, they're out to get you. Also, this is home to one of the most ineffective island cannons of the game. What there is to like about this island is its gunpowder tunnels and nice rock paintings. 53. Fool's Lagoon. This is probably the most forgettable island in the Ancient Isles. 52. Crooked Masts. This island is unique in a surprising number of ways. Firstly, it's probably the smallest large island in the game, on par with Snake Island. Secondly, it has no beach shorelines, only rocks. Finally, it's probably one of the most recognisable islands in the game from a distance. 51. Booty Isle. Chicken Isle has chickens, Snake Island has snakes. Imagine my disappointment when I first set foot on Booty Isle. 50. The Spoils of Plenty Store. Not the best sea post in the world, but I appreciate how its Hunter's Call representative Derek enjoys fine cuisine like myself. Here, check out this sausage with apple and mustard that I made. 49. Stephen Spoils. 48. Galleon's Grave Outpost. I used to hate this outpost for its location, but since I basically just do hourglass now anyway, I do kind of appreciate it for its design. It's impressive how a ship can be crushed that badly, and I love the cage at the top. Also, weirdly, the only outpost where you have to swim to the Athena's Tavern. 47. Picaroon Palms. This island is pleasant, but also pretty bland. 46. Discovery Ridge. Not a particularly interesting island in my opinion, but I do like the art of the trickster puzzles. Besides that, I don't feel there's much to say about it. 45. Devil's Ridge. Though the islands in this part of the list are very beautiful, there aren't really any areas of them which I find truly stunning. They're okay to go to, but overall there's little to talk about. I do like Devil's Ridge's superior cannon positions, and its waterfall and pond are very pretty, with a great boss fight location. 
Also, it's vault open sideways, which is cool, I guess, but there's nothing to make it truly stand out to me. 44, Lone Cove. Lone Cove does have a certain uniqueness to it. It's as close to a Minecraft super flat as you could find in a Sea of Thieves island. No shame in being flat, just not quite as good, is it? 43, Crooks Hollow. Some people say they feel uneasy at this island. Some claim it to be haunted. I can't say I've ever gotten that sense here personally. I have to say I enjoy this island's role in the legendary storyteller tall tale with its distinct bridges and cave network. For the most part, this island is basically one big plateau rising out of the sea. 42, Ancient Gold Fortress. Aesthetically, I think the sea forts in the ancient isles are beautiful with their thick vegetation. These ancient abandoned structures tell a great story, but in terms of location and the number of barrels to loot, they just aren't it. 41, Old Brinestone Fortress. I rank this one above the other because Old Brinestone is a more imaginative name than Ancient Gold. 40, Keel Hall Fort. This fort is pretty special to me since it's where I did keg rain. Besides that, I do enjoy the design of it being a fortified bay. The issue with this fort is when playing it. If you get a load of pistol skeletons after you, it's so flat that they all basically have a clear shot and you just get absolutely lasered. Also, I like that you only need to check the horizon to the southeast, given that that's the only direction a ship would ever come at you from. 39. Wanderer's Refuge. This is kind of like a Giga Snake Island, but with a bit more to offer. I'd love to know what this place was like before its settlement was destroyed. I also love the hidden hideout here, which was just so cool to accidentally stumble across. Like Stitcher Jim's lair, I felt as though I'd found something truly secret. Here's a fun fact too. In early development, it was called Wanderer's Archipelago. Of course, it wasn't a great name when it got combined into one island. It's now got a perfect name for Wanda though, who used it as her refuge. I see what you did there, Rare. Also, some cool early islands are Kraken's Fall, which I prefer to the actual Kraken's Fall, with its one big skeleton chilling on a small island. Pause the video if you want to see any of the other early development islands, there's some really interesting stuff in there. Some bad, some I wish we could have seen in the game. 38, Crescent Isle. Having an island in the shape of a crescent moon is a great idea, and from above, I think this is one of the best looking islands. 37, Sailor's Bounty. Being right in the very northwest, it's a pain to reach Sailor's Bounty, and from the surface, perhaps it leaves a bit to be desired, besides the pirate portraits that can be found here. Diving deeper though, we can discover its amazing network of traps and tunnels, culminating in its boss room. 36, Plunder Valley. If it wasn't for Glitterbeard, this island would honestly be a lot lower. The fact that the team went to such lengths to commemorate someone who they liked very much is heartwarming. And on top of that, the event itself is majestic and memorable. And it massively improves a bad island. 35, Thieves Haven. The first island to be discovered by the Pirate Lord, this place is iconic. And it has layers like a cake. Two layers to be exact. This is just an extremely cool design for an island. Unfortunately, I would rather do a riddle in Chernobyl than have to do another riddle in Thieves Haven. I might regret saying that when I'm ripping out a tune on the accordion next to the elephant's foot, but my spirit believes it to be true. 34, Barnacle Key. This island looks like someone took a munch out of it and that's funny. 33, Salty Sands. This island sounds like a Fortnite location. 32, Sandy Shallows. It's pretty shallow here to be honest, but I still like it. 31, Smuggler's Bay. This is the biggest island in the main map besides from Tribute Peak, and it's got it all. Cliffs, really, really weirdly steep land, sand, grass, cave, bridge, abandoned structures, secret camps, easter eggs, and a wicked big bay. It's all going on here. 30, the Crow's Nest Fortress. What doesn't Smuggler's Bay have though? That's right, a pond. And that's why the Crow's Nest Fortress is better. Also, I like the challenge of trying to land on its crow's nest platform. 29 and 13. Just a regular uncharted isle at first glance, but surrounded with mysteries and history. A strange stone tablet, the wreck of the magpie's glory, and an ancient vault hidden beneath. Quite a fascinating little island. 28 Rum Runner Isle. This small island has the amazing ability to erase skeleton galleons from existence. 27 Twin Groves. For some reason, I've fought a massive army of skeletons on this island not once, but twice. And that's not happened anywhere else. 26. North Star Seapost. This is the home of our based astronomer friend, Suds. 
Unfortunately, it also has Merrick's horrible wife. Hello, love. 25 Cannon Cove. The first island we ever saw featuring in the game's reveal trailer. It's undeniably iconic and extremely recognisable by its silhouette. I just hate getting any X marks the spot maps which mark the treasure as being in this kind of area. 24 The Fort of the Damned. I don't like the wilds of the raw because those are regions that you may find yourself exploring and voyaging in a lot and to me that means they should be pretty. However, a place like the Fort of the Damned so heavily linked to the Sea of the Damned, almost like a full on gateway, that should absolutely be reflected in its aesthetics and that's what you get here. Shrouded in a permanent fog and feeling very haunted indeed, it's got the perfect aesthetics for such a place. 23 Imperial Crown Fortress The forts in the shores of Plenty are a little more… plentiful. From what I can tell they have more barrels which is great for stocking upon supplies. They aren't as visually interesting but their utility makes them great. I've ranked this one lower due to its slightly less convenient location on the map. 22 Hidden Spring Keep this is one of the prettier sea forts with that great tower overlooking a spring. 21 The Finest Trading Post Out of all the trading posts I'd say this one is definitely the fanciest one. I've mostly ranked it so high for its model ship, which is one of my favourite Legend of the Sea easter eggs. It's a reference to a model ship replica made by a streamer for the game's first birthday, which is a nice thought. The NPCs are good too, one being permanently seasick and the other being Merrick's son who is also a kind of community creation. 20 Cutlass Key It's a cute small island in the shape of a blade, so much to love. 19 Lookout Point I think Lookout Point is a lovely little island with its lower portion and higher portion. Sort of like a large island but mini if that makes any sense. The objects left behind here tell a story too, perhaps one of someone who came here to look out to sea in a fairly secluded area of the map. It feels peaceful here. 18 Boulder Key First off, the name fits. It does indeed have a large boulder. But I've ranked this island so highly because of the wreck of the Morning Star off its coast, one of my favourite ships in the Sea of Thieves lore. I adore the sail design and I use it myself. A ship that was broken and repaired so many times, finally laid to rest here. 17 Royal Crest Fortress Definitely the most conveniently placed sea fort in the game, therefore the highest ranked. 16 Sanctuary Outpost it's always a pleasure to spawn here. Definitely the best located outpost in the game for a start, being situated in the northwest of the map. And this is good because it's a lot more likely that wherever you're going, you'll be sailing with the current of the waves, i.e. southeast. Additionally, it's very beautiful and full of easter eggs. The best among them being this banana barrel, which is full of... bananas. It also has a small island which I swear always has loads of chain shots, which I call Chain Shot Island. 15 Chicken Isle. Get this. It's in the shape of a chicken leg. And it's got chmickens. And a picture of a cat dancing with chickens. 14. Sailor's Not Stronghold This is certainly the most picturesque fort in the game. I love the raised building and watchtower upon a spire of rock with bridges set between it and the mainland. 13. Mutineer Rock This may seem like a strange choice but more than any other island in my list this is here for personal reasons. This is the first island I ever ventured to after leaving the outpost and set off on my journey in the Sea of Thieves. 12. The Lagoon of Whispers The Lagoon of Whispers is unique in being the only small island with a permanent NPC. It's of course a great place to get tattered up by Umbra and she also offers laser removal. 11. Ancient Spire Outpost This is by far the coolest outpost, with its tavern situated on top of its spire overlooking the buildings and the sea below. Coming down to the docks via the scenic route can send you down lots of winding passageways and I'm so glad it was the first outpost I ever spawned at. This place feels like the abstract idea of adventure condensed into an island. Also, if you want to go to the Raw, this is the best situated island to spawn at. There's so much to live about this place. If I had to live on an island in the Sea of Thieves, I think it would be here. We're at the top 10 now, well done for making it this far, thank you. Before I move on, I want to quickly advertise my guild. I desperately need active members to help level it up to the higher distinctions, so if you think you could be an active member, then follow the link to the application form in the description and I'll add you if I can. Now, on to the top 10. 10. Castaway Isle If I wasn't allowed to live in an outpost, I'd probably chill on Castaway Isle. It's already decked out with all the stuff a castaway could ever need after all. 
and in my spare time I could watch ships fighting over the Fort of the Damned. I could also look at this ancient stone archway, and this skull here reminds me of what happened to my father. 9. The Glorious Sea Dog Tavern The Glorious Sea Dog Tavern is kind of like a mega sea post, isn't it? It's like a big rock, but with lots of docks and a huge building, and horrible shopkeepers. Come back soon. Next year, it's a great place to buy supplies if you're low on them, which can often be convenient with it being so close to the middle of the map. And another thing that makes this place so unique is its parkour course, which is a lot of fun to race up. And since it's not really a proper island, you can take your mermaid if you fall. Also, it's uncharted, which makes it feel special. Finally, this is what remains of the awesome arena mode. And it's nice to have somewhere to remember it by. 8. Mermaid's Hideaway This skeleton swam all the way to Mermaid's Hideaway and then died on the beach, which sucks. He must have been stupefied by the pure beauty of it. The stone pillars which have to be cannoned onto, there's a pond, and of course, five paces Frank chills here too. On top of that, this place has deep lore relating to the merfolk, and diving down here, you'll discover this great hidden area. One might even call it a mermaid's hideaway? 7. Rapier Key This is the smallest island of the game by my calculations, although according to merfolk's lullaby, Boulder Key is smaller. But like, shut up, I'm saying Rapier Key is smaller. Anyway, I think it's lovely and cosy and it makes X marks the spot maps really, really easy. And of course, it has little patches of grass, which I wish I could sit on IRL. 6. Reaper's Hideout It's ugly, very ugly, but how could I deny somewhere that's brought me so much profit? A 2.5 times bonus on everything, uh, yes please. Also, wicked mines underground. Would be nice if Flameheart could show his face, but that's okay, he's shy. Back on the surface, it's well fortified, and I love that when they removed the sandbar, which a billion players must have crashed into, they left a couple of shovels down there. Must be hard to shovel sand underwater. On the western island, you can find this book, which actually has some very deep lore in it, which I was not ready for. Unfortunately, I need to move on, you'll have to check it out yourself. 5. Old Salts Atoll This is my favourite small island in the game, there's a lot going on on it. The shipwreck, the statues, it's a perfect little place. I love the story it tells and its compact design makes it very pretty. I just wish it weren't so solitary, so it could be admired more often. 4. K9 Does it need explanation? The only medium-sized island that's not a skeleton fort, completely uncharted, turquoise waters, but half the island is classed as being in the wilds. That's great, because that means you can catch wild splashes here without having to look at sewage water. Also, donut shaped, always a plus with a shipwreck in the middle and a secret passage to a skeleton throne. You'll never see those awful skeletons or ocean crawlers here, so it's really peaceful. And that's not all, there's basically always a rowboat or a storage crate here. And one last thing, it has a dog, because it's on Map Square K9, and that's hilarious. I mean like, not laugh out loud hilarious, but like, whatever, huh, that's clever, kind of hilarious. Okay, bye dog, I have to move on to number three. 3. Port Merrick Although I of course miss Golden Sands, Port Merrick is much more special and distinctive. After all, from a distance, Golden Sands and Sanctuary were somewhat indistinguishable for one whose eyes aren't so keen. I'm so glad the community decided to save this place, because were it a dark, dingy Reaper outpost, it would not be so high on the list. I love the stone seaport structures, the tavern with its cellar and stove with the shops surrounding it. I also love the garden and the towers. It's beautifully designed and all works incredibly well to create this sense of grandeur in a modernising world. 2. Old Sailor's Isle Nestled at the edge of the shroud lies Old Sailor's Isle. Utterly isolated in its Silurian plain, transcending the boundaries of imagination, this place is one of an impossible beauty. This paradisal heaven, shaped like a majestic lobster, unfolds its exquisite beauty beneath an eternal sunlit sky, where the golden glow of perpetual daylight bathes the landscape in a warm, ethereal embrace. Palm trees sway rhythmically, their emerald fronds whispering secrets of a far-off place carried on the tropical breeze on shores adorned with pristine ivory-white beaches. Impossibly perched atop the island lies the magpie's glory. Now sat frozen in time, a poignant reminder of nature's wrath and a peaceful passage of time, and within it, undiscovered riches to find. Deep within the island lies a cave, at the heart of which is a weathered rowboat, telling of a deep nautical history here. A sailor could dwell in this cave for hours, listening to the symphony of lapping waves against the cave walls, before bringing the long-abandoned rowboat away on a new odyssey. 
Old Sailor's Isle is no mere tropical haven, it is a sanctuary of dreams. Celestial masterpiece where reality and fantasy intertwine, leaving those who set foot on its shores with tears of wonder and grandeur for the sublime beauty that exists in this timeless corner of the world. And to the north, one can sense adventure beckoning them on to undiscovered wonders in the Sea of Thieves. 1. Brian's Bazaar You're probably thinking this is a strange choice for number one, but what I'm about to divulge to you will blow your mind. Here, look at it on the map. Now watch. Brian. Ring any bells? That's right. It's the name of the talking dog from Family Guy supplanting Brian's Bazaar in its number one spot. Thank you for watching to the end, everyone. Don't forget to join the Minecraft server, apply to the guild, and watch more of my content appearing on your screen now. As always, safe voyages, everyone.